Well, it's been two days since the rain subsided, and uh, since I lost electricity today, uh, previously I'd been able to work through the whole flood issue, but um, I'm going to take a stroll around the hood and check out some of the damage. Here's some evidence of the flood. This is the uh, closest bit I've seen to my house, about a block and a half away. This poor backyard's turned into a little pond and the ducky made it home. This is Aqueduct Field. It's about, uh, I don't know, I'd say a half mile southwest of my house. Waters have been pumped out of this basin and started to soak into the ground. But you can still see big evidence of the puddles here. And actually, the stench is kind of nauseating. Uh, it's actually really overpowering. Here's the Budlong Pool. A couple days ago it was completely submerged. You can still see the disgustingness of the water. If you notice along the edge, it seems to be a combination of algae and raw sewage. That, uh, that's probably going to take some time to clean up. <laughs> For a bit of evidence of the power and the persistence of water, the road here seems to not be able to drain what's left. And the water's made its own path back to a larger body of itself. But this is Blackmore Pond. I'm not gonna lie, it looks about the same level that I'm used to seeing it, but judging by the amount of foliage that is still submerged, I'm guessing the water level's quite a bit higher than it actually normally is. Here you can see a bit more evidence of the plants that are normally not underwater. And further evidence of the persistence of man. Spain restaurant here, one of Nicole and my favorite places to go, was completely submerged on Wednesday. They've already got landscapers back out, fixing everything up. So don't worry, Cranstonites, there'll be plenty of sangria flowing still. I'm going to be honest here, as much as Mother Nature was pissing on us earlier in the week, it's such a gorgeous day, I think she's trying to apologize today. Here's a sad little note kitty cat found on the uh, first day of major flooding. If you're missing a cat, it looks like uh, you should call these people. Well, I'm all the way down back of the Willowbrook Apartments. What's normally a small babbling brook appears to be a full-fledged swamp. So a stark contrast to the receding waters over by Aqueduct Field. It appears they've receded a bit here, but are nowhere close to their natural levels. If we look over to the right, we actually see jungle gym gymnasium playground thing that was actually toppled by the floodwaters. So it's receded quite a bit. As you can see, none of the apartment areas are really underwater still. But, uh, that's looking and smelling pretty bad right there. It's a 
further illustrate my point, that dumpster is where tenants are supposed to take their rubbish. And it's now on an island in a swamp. Apparently I was mistaken after speaking with some of the residents. That dumpster in the distance was washed away from that location. Two days ago, this entire apartment complex was a lake and a gentleman was saying that the water was up to about halfway through the windows. So, I know FEMA is scheduled to come and check some of the damages in these apartments today. My heart just goes out to the people that are in trouble. And here's a car that, uh, probably not doing so well. I heard that the water was up over its roof at the high point down here. Apparently tragedy does not stop the entrepreneurial spirit. Pontiac Ave's pretty muddy. And this tributary of the Patuxet here still well overflowing its banks and it's actually abutting this building's foundation. It's back behind the CLCF building on the portion of Pontiac Ave that's still closed here. I guess we'll call it Lake CLCF now. So here in the Garden City neighborhood, where they're at least a quarter mile from any body of water, the saturation effect in their yard ended up permeating their foundation. If you look closely, there's water shooting out of here about good six inches. It's still coming out a little bit right here. Yeah, you can see water coming up through a new crack in their foundation. At last I heard we hadn't lost anyone in the floods here in Rhode Island. But on my walkabout town today, when I came across this historic cemetery I didn't even know existed, I was further reminded of the ephemeral nature of life. These people were laid to rest more than a hundred years ago, and the stones still carry their name. Verizon working hard to repair some of the lines in the area. One of their subterranean junctions was completely flooded. Here's about $200,000 worth of garbage. Well, after my walk about town, I think about the only positive thing that's come from this whole situation. So everyone seems a hell of a lot nicer. Certainly seems as though everyone tends to realize that we're all a little more interconnected now than they realized last week. Cleanup effort's not over. I know that the Rhode Island Red Cross is taking volunteers. You can find their number on their website. If you don't have money or time to donate, just go to your neighbors, see if they need a hand.